Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lori's Live. I'm Lori Mestis of Mestis Ministries, and I'm broadcasting live from LA, California. I have my Southern Belle look on today as I was out and about already doing some things I'll share with you as we go into today's message. But anyway, I just want to say that uh, today's going to be fun, and I'm going to continue on with a message I began yesterday about how to walk completely free from me. <laughs> I didn't call it that yesterday, but I like it. How to walk completely free from me. Today I put the title as how to get free from the me, me, me Christianity. <laughs> well, you think, well, wait, I don't, I'm not like that. I'm not all about me, but when we discover some things today and when we basically expose some things today, you're going to be like, wow, I didn't realize how much I live my life for me. Because we do. <laughs> whether we want to admit it or not, whether we like it or not, well, our flesh loves it. But whether we really, you know, understand that, man, God's showing me some great things about that that I think will help us so much to really understand the life that God wants us to live as believers because he's called us to live in the spirit and not in the flesh. So it's an interesting thing. And again, if you weren't on with me yesterday, I'm going to recommend that you watch yesterday's episode. Oh my gosh. You know, it was just cool because God really, the very last second gave me one word for me, and then it enabled me to share it with you, and it just sprung into this whole episode yesterday. But that word was about, I didn't call you to comfort, but I called you to come to me, and that's where you'll be comforted. So we spoke about that, and we spoke about just trusting God completely with every step we take and every move we make. So today, I'm going to just uh, basically expound on yesterday's message because there's more things God showed me that are just really, really cool and kind of fun to share. Because when we realize, you know, who we really are and how we really are, it will help us to become who we're supposed to be. Write that down. <laughs> really, like it'll be, help us to know, I didn't realize how much I'm all about me. <laughs> I just thought of that song, I gotta be me, I gotta be me, <laughs> or Frank Sinatra's song, I did it my way, you know, it's all this big anthem, you know, well, it's not about doing it our way. <laughs> As a believer today, we need to know it's not about doing it our way. <laughs> anyway. Praise the Lord. So <laughs> I'm going to pray, get underway, and I'll say hello to some of you who've come on already. So Father, thank you for today. We love you. We honor you. We thank you, Father, for this time that we have together. Father, I thank you that every time, every moment of the day is your time. So even though this is the time that we're dedicating to you to be together, to hear from you, Father, I thank you that that's how we are 24-7, that we dedicate our lives to hear from you. Glory to God. And that way you can lead us, Lord. You can guide us. You can instruct us, Father. And in that process, bless us. Because we know that when we're willing and obedient, we eat the best of the land, Lord. So I just thank you for my brothers and sisters today that we choose you over ourselves that we choose you every step of the way. And they all said, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, hello, Emmanuel. Good to have you. Hi, Ginger. Praise God. Hey, Robert. Hi, Lisa Kelly. Good to see you as well. You know, this is going to be really cool. I'm excited about it. And uh, I just want to say that uh, this is a cool, wonderful topic. And I feel like as we really hone in on this understanding, it'll bring liberty to us. It will bring liberty to you when you realize how much your life is not about you. <laughs> 
some clap emojis, please. Yay. Okay, so as we go on Lori's Live, if you're new to me, I love it when you guys put in comments so we can interact with each other and it just helps us, you know, gets the word out more and, you know, just enables that engagement to take root and take place and move forward. So help me with that today. Throw up hearts to God if something resonates with you or whatever you want to do in that regard. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I know you guys are loving my look today. Well, I will say I wore this out and about when I went to the chiropractor today because out here, of course, it's sunny and hot. So I have my hat, my sun hat. <laughs> and uh, believe it or not, this little scarf, I guess you could say, <laughs> is also a mask. <laughs> and then I can be a headband. It's a <laughs> three purpose, a uh, three in one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, anyway, um, and so I literally just came back from there and whew, here I am. So uh, some, I just want to say real quick what happened today as well. I, I want to share this with you as we go into this whole concept of just really, really, really not being about our own agenda, our own life, our own schedule, our own whims likes, dislikes, etc. Okay. So today, um, actually yesterday, the Lord had me call my chiropractor and, uh, book an appointment for today. Now I'm going to tell you something. Um, usually I call my chiropractor when I'm really hurting. <laughs> okay. And it's like, Oh my gosh, could I get an appointment? Cause I pray and I thank God I'm healed and it, it subsides and stuff, but this silly little thing would try to come back. Right. Well, I had been praying lately and it was like gone, man. I was like, I don't even need to go, right? And I'm like, forget this. I, I'm not even going to go. I'm good. And I hadn't been there for like a month. And the Holy Spirit uh, told me, call and make an appointment. Now, if I went by my own feelings and my own logic, I'd be like, no, I'm good. I don't need to go. But I made an appointment because God said to. Praise the Lord. So I went. Well, I'm outside waiting for the appointment and the Lord has me go over to this girl and I said, hi, what you doing? And we were started talking as complimenting her on her hair, which really is how the conversation started. And one thing led to another. I said, you know what? I want to invite you to something. And she was like, okay, where are we going? It was kind of cute, her, her response. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Her, her, her nephew who she had with her, I think maybe two years old, had a shirt on that said, little but mighty. That's what his shirt said, little but mighty. So I said, well, I said, well, aren't you the mighty one? You know, I started talking to this little boy and, and I said, well, you know what? I know someone else who's mighty. Do you know someone else who's mighty? And this girl, the aunt says to me, you are. I said, well, actually it's God. He's mighty. She's like, amen. The Lord is mighty. <laughs> I said, yes. And I'm mighty in him. Well, it started the conversation. I said, well, because, you know, I was going to ask you a question. I was going to invite you to this place I'm going to. But this was a great way to know where you're at about it. So essentially, I invited her to my church, to my church service Wednesday night. We're having a big revival service. We've been doing this on Wednesday nights. And I invited her to come to the service. She already being a believer. And she's been to my church. And get this. She said she was there for Christmas, for the Christmas uh, event that we did and the musical that we did. And I'm like, oh, well, you might have seen me because I started out the musical. I started out the program singing, have yourself a merry little Christmas. She's like, oh, that was you. Okay. So I'm just saying, I just went to the chiropractor, <laughs> but had this little bit of time before my appointment. I was outside waiting and lo and behold, I speak to this girl, invite her to the uh, revival meeting for tomorrow night. She was excited about it. Okay, so now on my way into the chiropractor, I see some people sitting over at this little um, place, this tea place. I forget what it's called actually. <laughs> but anyway, people have tea and breakfast and stuff like that. Okay, I'm looking to see if I wrote it down because I thought that I did. Nonetheless, um, I see this woman in particular. Okay, actually tea gardens. It's called the tea gardens. And I see this woman you see, I was perfectly dressed for having tea today. However, I didn't have time. <laughs> anyway, so I went over. Oh, yeah. So I saw this lady out of the corner of my eye having tea and breakfast. And so I just knew from the Holy Spirit, like, oh, you should talk to her. Well, at the same token, I knew, I, I just knew I needed to get into the chiropractor because my appointment. I mean, I was like running right on time for that appointment. I didn't want to be late, but I said to the Lord, okay, if, if she's here on the way out, I'll definitely talk to her. Now, 
I'm going to say this right now. Uh, that's not always the best way to go. And usually with God and I, we have a thing where I'll just go and do it when I'm super impressed to do it. When he says, I'll just do it right away. And, and that's what I encourage people to do right away. Because sometimes when you come out of where you are, they're going to be gone. But yet I just had a real peace about it in my spirit that I need to go here first to my chiropractor. Well, if I hadn't done that, I, hadn't, I wouldn't have met that girl that I met and invited her to church, who's been to my church, right? And invited her to this, this Main Street thing. And she was really excited, this revival. She was super excited about it. So that wouldn't have happened if I stopped there. You see, mm, mm. You really have to know you're led by the Spirit when it comes to all this. That's why we will be talking more today about how to be led by the Spirit more and more and more. So anyway, after I came out of the chiropractor, lo and behold, this woman was still there. And I went over to her at her table. Now, mind you, I'm just walking by, but I went into the restaurant area. It's outside, but I walked into that space and I went right up to this table. Her name was Wanda. And she was with her granddaughter, Leslie. Hi, guys, if you're watching this, that they were going to watch today. <laughs> anyway, um, but the Lord had me go over and just say, God bless you. I said, I just want to say, God bless you. And she was so blessed. And she said, thank you. Well, we got to talking and, and we just had a great conversation. So it was so cool because God ordained that totally. And I didn't feel rushed. I mean, I know I've got this one o'clock broadcast, which, you know, sometimes I'm not right on at one because I'm like running from something else that I'm doing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was so precious talking to them. I invited them to come to the Main Street Revival. I asked if she was on Facebook. She said, yes. I said, here's my name. You can watch what I'm doing and get on my, you know, lives and praise the Lord. See, oh my gosh, God is so He's so, uh, how do I want to say, he, he literally orchestrates our lives if we let him. He is so into detail. He is so into every little moment of our lives. He's more into every moment of your life than you are. Think about that. He, oh my gosh, he, he is so He's, it's amazingly infinite, like how he's so detail oriented. And I want to talk about that today because I started thinking about some great things with the subject of the me, me, me Christianity thing, which we need to get over completely. It's not me anymore. It's Christ. It's Christ, not me. I told you guys yesterday that God said to me at one point, he said that I need to be completely void of self completely void of self. And here's the neat thing about that. I didn't tell you this part, but I'll tell you today. He said this, you need to be completely void of self so I can use you completely. Completely void of self so I can use you completely. I want you to think about that for a minute. See, we may think God is using us and uses us, and he does. And I know God uses me a lot. There's things God wants to do through you that are going to be so amazing to you, but they won't have anything to do with you. It will be straight up you're a vessel for God. I'm talking about healings and miracles. I'm talking about God using you in a way that is so supernatural. Because here's the thing. That's why it's called supernatural. It's not natural. It supersedes natural. But if we're in the natural at all, God can't use us the way he wants to completely in the supernatural. Okay, praise the Lord, hallelujah. If that makes sense to you, if you get that, just throw up hearts to God or say amen. That's the truth. Listen, he said go preach the gospel and as in he, as in Jesus, preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick. Okay, how many people are laying hands on the sick? I mean, I do as the spirit leads me to, but I'll tell you right now, I'm just saying that to you because, you know, I know that this is all part of it. But very few of us are laying hands on the sick. You know why? Because very few of us are even talking to anybody about Christ. We're afraid to talk to people about Christ. So are you kidding? Lay hands on the sick? Oh my gosh. Well, it's no different. It's just being used of the Lord. It's being so one with him that he flows out of you. 
You're flowing with him. It's not you. Okay. So that's what this whole thing's about. Super heavenly. Yes, Emmanuel, super heavenly. It's living in the heavenly realms. God is a spirit. That's where he lives, but he lives on the inside of you. And we know that we're one with him. And I've been teaching this for months and months and months. 42 scriptures about being one with him, being one with him in the spirit. So I want to share with you something, a word that he gave me today. He seems to give me sometimes a word specific, and it takes this whole thing in a really great way. But this is what it's all about. I mean, basically today, as I was waiting for my appointment outside before I met the first girl, he said this to me. He said that he didn't excuse me one second. I didn't call you to comfort. That was yesterday. Hold on one second. I'm ahead of myself. He said this, if you walk in me, you'll have perfect peace. If you walk in me, you'll have perfect peace. Now listen to this. Okay. I said to God, but kind of more like to myself at the same time, I was thinking about it. So I kind of said, so how do I walk in your spirit. So I'm like kind of conversing with God about it. He says, if you walk in me, you'll have perfect peace. So I said, well, how do, how do I walk in your spirit? And I heard where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So not only does God want you to walk in the supernatural for him to accomplish what he wants you to accomplish for the kingdom, he wants to bless you with peace. He wants to bless you with joy. He wants to bless you with power, power to overcome, power to be all he's called you to be. He wants to bless you with that. And then I, I looked up the scripture, Romans 8, 6, because I knew there was a scripture about what happens when you walk in the spirit. And it says this, the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. The mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace peace. So what God is saying to me is walk more in the spirit. That's how you walk with me. You walk with me in the spirit. Walk with me in the spirit. Let me lead you. Let me guide you. Let me tell you what to do next. And then when you're walking in the spirit, the peace is, it's, I almost want to say overwhelming, but I, how do I say it? Do you, how many of you know what I'm talking about? When you have that peace from God, it's a peace that passes all understanding. That's what it is. That guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So when you're walking in the spirit fully, you have full peace. Oh my gosh. It's powerful peace. <laughs> peace that's powerful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this just that happened this morning when I'm sharing with you into the message today. So yesterday, I want to piggyback off of some things that happened. So I shared with you yesterday how I felt like God was like showing me right now how I need so much to be in sync with him in terms of every decision I make, every step I take, everything, everything. Okay. So I felt like I was in school. I said to God, I'm like, I feel like I'm in school. And the name of the school came to me was Dying to Self School. <laughs> Dying to Self School. Now, you may say, well, I died to myself. I live for Christ. Well, let me ask you a few questions. Let's just see if that's true. I know for me, it's not true. I mean, the scripture says, you know, I died to myself. I live for Christ. But do I live for Christ? Every moment of my day, every second of my day, are you living for Christ every second of your day? So what does that mean? Does that mean like um, I'm spending time in the word all day long? That's not what I'm talking about. And I want to say this. We seem to compartmentalize our lives and our time with God. So in other words, we seem to say, okay, I'm going to get up. I'm going to spend time with God. Praise God for that. I do that. I, I get up and boom, I'm already praying in the spirit, right? I'm just, that's how it is. And my morning's all there. Then I go into this. Well, God has given me a certain amount of hours a day now, like seriously, like to be in that place with him, intimate place with him, holy of holy place with him. That's 
beyond anything I would ever imagine that would even make sense for me to do. <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm not the boss of my life. The question is, who's the boss of your life? When someone has lordship over your life, he's the boss. I remember back in Chicago in our kids' church, when they would explain what it meant for Jesus to be Lord of your life, they would say, he's the, means he's the boss of your life. He becomes the boss. And yesterday, I saw somebody's profile picture that had friended me, and it's a minister, and he said, God is my boss. God is my boss. And I thought to myself, well, I have surely said that before, but is it surely true? Is it really true? So anyway, yesterday I was sharing some things with you about that idea, like God saying to me, okay, well, whose ministry is this, yours or mine? He said, you choose. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, it's yours. It's yours. I don't, because uh. <laughs> when it's mine, then I'm trying to make it happen and I could white knuckle it. Then I can get into the flesh. I can get into the works part of it. No, I'm just here for God. God told me to do it. I'm doing it. I love it, but it's not mine. Okay. So I want to, I want to share with you a few other things. So when it comes to this whole dying to self school, you know, I want to, I want to ask you the question like, okay, let's talk about what you eat every day. I'm sure you don't ask God, oh God, what should I eat for breakfast? What should I eat for lunch? Hmm. I really feel like having such and such for dinner, but Lord, what do you think I should have? How many of you do that? Like every day? Right. I'm sure most of us don't do that. Well, I do that now. I ask God all the time, show me what to have. What do we wear? I actually talk about this in my, in my Witness with Confidence course, training myself to hear God's voice. I would go into my closet. So, okay, God, show me what to wear today. And an outfit would jump out at me. And that it was so cool. And so I just did it every day because I wanted to train myself, train myself. So that was one of the ways I did it. Well, you know, um, I'm wearing what I'm wearing today because I felt led to put this on today to go out because I had to go out and wear my little hat. And I thought, and God's like, just keep it on for the live. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, Lord. What you wear, what you eat, what you say, what you do, even what you pray. Oh my gosh. Even what you pray. I don't even pray my own way. In other words, I don't have a set way I pray. I don't. I have a heavenly language from God with God that he gave me. I pray in that language. If God leads me to say something in English, I will. Say something in understanding, I will. I don't even pray my own prayers. I pray God's prayers the way he wants me to pray because I want to come in agreement with He, what, what he says. What he wants me to say will come in agreement with his heart. Oh my gosh. Praise the Lord. I hope you're getting this. And you know, yesterday I talked a lot about this idea of praying in the spirit and praying in the spirit. And somebody said to me, it was cool. She's like, thank you so much for reminding me of doing that. And so I want to read you my reply to what she said. If I can find it here, praise the Lord. Okay. Give me one moment, please. Here it is. <laughs> she said this, uh, pray more in a heavenly language. Thank you for the constant reminder. And I said this back to her. I said, the best way to stay in the spirit is to pray in the spirit. The best way to stay in the spirit is to pray in the spirit. The best way to, yeah, so in other words, if you wanna live in the spirit 24 seven, which is what we're called to do, we are called to live in the spirit. The Bible says that if we live in the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So why would we not live in the spirit as much as we possibly can? The best way to live in the spirit and to stay in the spirit is to pray in the spirit. So the more you pray in the spirit, you're going to stay in the spirit. Praise the Lord. I am telling you guys, if you get anything out of this today, get this. 
pray in the spirit pray in the spirit and i say it again pray in the spirit like <laughs> like paul said rejoice i say again rejoice seriously pray in the spirit and more and more and more and the more you do you're going to become like the holy spirit i've been teaching this whole thing on righteousness this whole thing about getting our lives together before god well when you hang out with holiness when you hang out with the holy spirit you're going to become more holy there's nothing you can do to become holy you get in that place with the holy spirit and all those things will start falling off of you you're not going to want to do those things that you would find yourself wanting to do or be tempted to do because you're so entwined with the spirit and the spirit and the mind they're at enmity with each other okay they, they, they don't they don't coincide praise the Lord praise the Lord God is so faithful he is so 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 faithful and I'm telling you someone even said yesterday she was so grateful for this this uh, episode because I was talking about this whole idea not my ministry God's ministry and <laughs> hands off Lori basically that's what he's telling me hands off like I'm getting freer and freer and freer as I've been doing this. And I've been doing this for a while, as you know, almost six months. But you know, I'm in terms of the regular broadcast. But I'm saying to you, like he is setting me free the more I stay in the spirit, the more I stay in the spirit, listening to him. And you know what? Yes, Dan, I, I, I saw you say that about the food thing. I'm telling you right now, people, if you have any issues with food, everyone, like if you know you're tempted to eat certain things, mm, I shouldn't eat, or you know they're not good for you, or whatever it is, and you know the Holy Spirit has dealt with you about it, okay, listen, you know what? Ask God. God, what would you like me to eat? It, it might surprise you, but you know what? Then be obedient, because when you're willing and obedient not just obedient but willing and obedient you will eat the best get it eat <laughs> the best of the land praise god he loves us and he has a work for us to do and guess what if we're eating food that's not healthy for us we can't be able-bodied ministers for christ it's not just able-bodied as far as like, oh, yes, I'm able-bodied, like, yes, I'm ready to go. But you know what? If we are not healthy, if we're not taking care of ourselves, if we're not getting rest, you guys, you know what? God has shown me lately that I need to get nine to 10 hours of sleep a night. Like, I'm like, that seems like a heck of a lot of sleep. You know, I could argue with God about it. Well, guess what? He tells me to go to bed at a certain time and... I'm just finally getting it together as far as like obeying him. Okay, like I'm seriously telling you, like I'm just gonna tell you, nine o'clock at night is the time he, told, he has told me for years, go to bed at nine, go to bed at nine, <laughs> go to bed at nine. <laughs> I had a funny story to tell you too. Oh my gosh, you may have heard this way back in this whole broadcast ministry thing. But um, years ago, I went to Florida on a little retreat and I was there and I was just spending time fasting and praying and hanging out with God and just looking for God to like show me the next step for my ministry. Get it? My ministry. <laughs> the next step what he wants me to do. And I was really excited to hear from God. So I really took a lot of time to pray in the spirit and a lot of time to just fast and be very, very intentional about my time with God. Well, you know, it was like the last day of my trip and I still hadn't heard anything from God or like this whole assignment I was looking to get from him. And I'm like, um, thinking like, okay, Lord, all ears here. <laughs> and you know what I heard him say? He said, go to bed at nine o'clock. Now I'm telling you this, he already told me that he's been telling me that for years before then, like he's been, t you know, telling me to go to bed at nine o'clock. I went to Florida, fasted, prayed for this whole, you know, direction for the ministry or what he wants me to do. And what does he tell me after five days? Go to bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> and I want to finish with this story here because it's really cool and I really think it will bless you. And so, you know, with, with this whole thing, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I heard the Lord say to me, he said, you had to come all the way to Florida because I lived in Chicago at the time. You had to come all the way to Florida for me to tell you to do something I've been telling you to do for years. Lord, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be laughing. I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing like, oh yeah, yeah, at me. <laughs> okay, seriously. See, God takes 
his word serious. He's serious when he tells you to do something. You know, we're all looking for this big assignment from God to go do these great and mighty works. And he's telling me go to bed at nine o'clock. I firmly believe that had I really been obedient over the nine o'clock, I want to say deadline, <laughs> nine o'clock, you know, bedtime, bedtime from God and stayed consistent, because I've done it, but I haven't stayed consistent. I, 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 don't, I don't know where I'd be today in God, but I'm sure we'd be, I'd be further along. I'll put it that way. I know I would be. I mean, I'm disciplined. A lot of a lot of things in my life are very disciplined with God, me and God. But man, this bedtime thing. So here's what he says. And oh my gosh, okay, check this out. You know, I said earlier about God being my boss and all that stuff. And a guy said that and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, God starts telling me this when I'm in Florida during this time. And he says, you know, you always call me the CEO of your business. So back then I had a business... Um, I still do actually in Chicago, it's an entertainment company. And I, God gave me the idea for the business and it was so cool. But anyway, um, I would always say to people, well, you know, in the morning I spend time with God. So, you know, to get my marching orders. So I'd always say, he's the CEO of my business and I'm the COO. So he's the CEO, the chief executive oper operator. <laughs> and I'm the COO, the chief operator officer. Sorry, the chief executive officer is God and I'm the chief uh, operating officers. In other words, the executive officer is telling the operator what to do. He's telling me how to operate the business. Well, that's what I would do every day with God. And he would give me what to do every day with my business. Well, here's what he said. He said, if I was really your boss, and I, if you really saying you're meeting with your boss, and I really was your boss, Lori, he said, I would have fired you a long time ago. <laughs> I would have fired you a long time ago because you haven't been obedient about going to bed at nine o'clock. My gosh. See, it's the little things. You know, the Bible says that the little foxes spoil the vine. See, between me and God, apparently it means so much to him that he brings it up to me all the time. It doesn't matter to me why should do I, I can't. Well, why me? Why does it mean so much to you? I mean, Lord, it's just me going to bed at nine o'clock. Can I go to bed at nine? Not what, what's wrong with nine fifteen, nine thirty? And sometimes I go to bed at nine fifteen and think I'm good. I'm okay. It's, it's only fifteen minutes after nine. Or hey, I'm still doing good. It's, you know, it's before ten. Who am I? Who am I to say it's okay? God said nine. Okay. And so, in conclusion, with this story, God then started showing me about Naaman and how. Um, if you remember, he was the, the king of Israel and he had leprosy and he went to the prophet and the prophet said, you know, he wanted to be healed. The prophet said, well, you need to go and you need to dip in the Jordan river seven times and you'll be healed. And at first he's like, no way. That's crazy. You know, the Jordan river is a really dirty river. So it made no sense to him at all. How would I be cleansed in a dirty river? <laughs> it makes no sense, right? And then he even went back again. He's like, well, listen, the servant talked to me. I want to talk to the big guy. And, you know, he's like, surely this isn't the answer. Same answer. Go dip in the Jordan River seven times. So I'm, honestly, what God showed me there was, he said, listen, I didn't tell him to dip six times and he would be healed. I didn't tell him to dip eight times. I told him seven. I told you nine o'clock to go to bed. See, it all depends how serious you are about God. I will admittedly tell you right now, I thought I was so serious about God. But the fact that I can't be serious about going to bed at the time he told me means I'm not serious about God. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. See, true confessions. If I can't be honest before you guys, you know, then I can't help you. What we think doesn't matter that much. It doesn't matter whether we think it matters. You know, I was thinking about Noah building the ark. You know, a hundred years it took him to build it. He could have thought, you know, God gave him very specific instructions how to build that ark. Very specific instructions. 
and exactly the kind of wood and exactly where everything needs to go and how to use the tar or whatever that stuff was that he used and all that kind of thing. You know, he gave him all these things he was supposed to do. And you could think, oh my gosh, at one point you could say, this is taking way too long. I really would like to get on this boat and get out of here. <laughs> this is taking too long. Why don't we use this other kind of stuff that we know, we know works really well as a glue you know, it, it, it'll be quicker to make it. We could put it together faster. What if, what if Noah was like, hey, let's, let's kind of speed it up a little bit. You know, let's cut some corners because, you know, we could do it this way, our way better. What if he did that? You know, they, it wouldn't have worked. I mean, they would have gone on in that arc and all of a sudden there's a leak and another leak and another leak and the water starts coming in. Because they didn't do it God's way, they would have drowned, they would have died, and we wouldn't be here today. Praise God. Okay. Well, that's enough for today. I think I think you're getting the message. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <sighs> I'm excited because right now I am so serious about what is happening with me and God. I just saw this here. Partial obedience, obedience is still us coming short. And it's disobedience. It is. It is disobedience. Partial obedience is not obedience. We think it's okay because it's the, I'm comfortable with this. This works for me, God. You know, by the way, the, the going to bed at night thing, um, I, I've been needing nine to 10 hours of sleep. I didn't even know I needed it, but God knew I needed it. That it has to do with why he's been wanting me to go to bed at that time. And it gets me up earlier to spend more time with him whatever. It's just straight up obedience. I'm getting so much freedom because I'm actually obeying full blown now about that thing. Oh my gosh. Hallelujah. That's right. Partial obedience is still coming short. Okay. I mean, oh, okay. We're going to continue on with this whole subject. I love this. It is so cool. I have more things to share with you, but let me say that will end for today. Okay. Because <laughs> I could keep going. Oh my gosh. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. We love you, God. We just, we're so grateful that you are a loving, merciful God. Thank you that you're a forgiving God. You're a forgiving God, Lord. My, 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 my. Mm, forgive us, Lord. We right now ask you to forgive us. Ask God to forgive you right now for anything you know you've come short of, or you haven't obeyed completely. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you <sighs> that you're faithful and you are just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. Thank you for cleansing us today. Thank you, Father God. Now we start fresh with you. Each day is a new day in Christ. So thank you, Lord, we can start fresh. God, I thank you that we have a fervor in us, a passion in us to obey you because we love you. So thank you for helping us to do so in Jesus' precious name. And they all said, amen. <laughs> wow, oh my gosh, I just thought about Jesus. I mean, if he didn't full-blown obey, we still, again, wouldn't be here with each other today. The people that obeyed all the way, you know, it, it's what makes Christianity what it really is today. We can't say we're a believer and not obey. Completely obey. So take stock of your life as we go into the next day of this whole topic. Take stock. Is there any place in my life I'm not obeying you, Lord, or that I've kind of made it work for me? Or, you know, I do it sometimes and not all the time, but I know you're a forgiving God. You know, just take stock of that and go to God about it. He wants us to walk fully, fully obedient and fully in his spirit. Love you guys. Thanks so much for coming on today, those who did. And hey, if you guys came on even after a moment, I encourage you, go back to the top. You'll want to watch the whole thing. It will encourage you. It's fun and it's exciting. But man, I'll tell you right now, we need to get this. And then he can use us mightily. 
in these end times. Praise the Lord. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for clicking love and sharing the love or whatever you want to click. <laughs> I love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Blessings.